it's funny, like, all these business videos and podcasts that talk about yeah. the importance of having a good CPA, but people don't realize how important it is to have a good tailor. All right, so at the tailor, the best tailor in Greenville, by oh, the way, thank you. Joseph. Thank you. And um, having to get, like, every pair of pants that I have taken in because... I've lost a significant amount of weight. I've lost like four inches on my waist. And uh, so this suit we just had custom made and literally now I think it taken in six weeks later. Um, so we'll go through a little bit of that and more uh, throughout today on kind of how I've been able uh, to do that and then uh, how we're gonna stick to it so that we don't have to come in here and say, please take this back out, <laughs> which is never good. My weight and, and my health is something that I have Kind of struggle with my whole life kind of ups and downs um, out of shape in great shape out of shape in great shape and uh, i think many of us are, are that way um, but right now i am so laser focused on getting in the best shape of my entire life um, and i'm doing that um, you guys know I'm, I'm big on this concept of core four now that i'm um, uh, learning uh, through sean whalen and just understanding that you have to be excelling in every single area of your life, not just in your business, but in your relationships, your mind and your body. The majority of people are not in sync in all areas. There's one, two, maybe three of those areas uh, where they're lacking and it affects them all. They all affect one another. You can't be excelling at work and losing at home in your relationships with your spouse and your kids. It doesn't work. You can't be excelling at home, excelling at work, but not eating the right things, not treating your body right, not working out at high intensity. It just takes all areas working congruently uh, to be able to live the best life. Check out this background back here. Beautiful, beautiful Greenville, South Carolina. This is a part of my new morning routine. I've got a bunch of things I'm doing in the morning, uh, a couple of things throughout the day, a couple of things at night. Uh, but my new morning routine is, is this, I wake up, uh, my, air, uh, my, my airplane is on phone mode. My phone is on airplane mode uh, an hour before bedtime and an hour after I wake up is when I turn it off at airplane mode. And that right there alone is like a shock to my system. I'm used to sitting and, and responding to messages on Facebook and, and Instagram pretty much until I pass out. And, when I wake up, it's the first thing that I look at in the morning. Um, but from there, I go straight into a 10 minute meditation. I'm using Headspace, uh, the app for that. Then going into 10 minutes uh, of gratitude, kind of journaling some things that I'm grateful for, writing out my core four uh, that I'm working on right now again, and then writing just a couple of things that come uh, to mind uh, at that moment after meditating and after being uh, grateful uh, intentionally. And every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm gonna be running five miles. So I just got done with that. I did it here downtown, beautiful Greenville. Um, I'm really, really fortunate. My house, you know, I walk out my door and walk about three, 400 yards. And, uh, and I'm on the Swamp Rabbit Trail here. And I'm about three quarters of a mile from this beautiful waterfall uh, from where my house is. So took this straight down the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Um, a good way is about three and a half miles and then turned around and, and came back. And here's what I want to tell you. Number one, this is, this is my second day uh, of doing this. Uh, but the thing I can immediately tell you is the difference maker is always felt like rushed for no reason. Like when I would wake up, I would always feel behind. I'd feel, I'd feel rushed. I'd feel late, even though it wasn't necessarily late to anything. It was just this mindset that I had that there was so much to do, so much to accomplish, so much to get going, that like the second I woke up, I was in a full sprint to get out the door and get to work and get started on these things. And what I realized, man, I realized that you just gotta take time for you in the beginning of the day. Get yourself into a right mental state in the beginning of the day, and then you can accomplish whatever you need to accomplish. And as I started this process of kind of figuring out what I wanted to do as a part of this morning routine, still in my mind, I thought to myself like, okay, crap, like I'm gonna have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm gonna have to wake up, have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning. But then I just realized like, well, what if I don't wanna wake up at 4.45? What if I don't wanna wake up at five o'clock in the morning? So like yesterday and today, I woke up at 6.45. I'm in town, I don't have any early morning meetings. So I woke up at 6.45 a.m., got up, did my meditation, did my gratitude journal, 
Now I just got done with this uh, run. It's nine o'clock, I'm about to walk back to my house. Gotta take that all in, take a shower, get some breakfast, and then start my day. But have started out the way I wanted to start it out. Started out the way I intentionally set everything in place and that will really set the tone for the rest of my day. So I think there's this, this misnomer, there's this uh, misconception that you have to get up super early, that you have to be bam, 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 bam. And look, that's what I've been doing for three and a half years and where has it gotten me? Yes, I've been successful. Yes, I've gotten a lot of things done, but to the to the detriment of my, my mind, to the detriment uh, of my family. Like yesterday, getting up and doing my meditation, doing my gratitude journal, then being able to sit and have breakfast with my wife and my daughter, being able to go wake up my daughter and pull her out of her crib and bring her downstairs and experience those beautiful, beautiful moments that I'm not gonna be able to have forever. Um, it's just super important. So I've just come to find that the things that you don't want to do, the things that you dread doing, figure out a way to eliminate those or figure out a way to build a system around uh, around those processes to do it on your time. Like I didn't want to wake up at five o'clock this morning. I wanted to wake up at 6.45, but guess what? I'm still gonna get everything done that I need to get done today. And at the end of the day, I'll feel accomplished. I'll feel like, okay, I got what I needed to get done today. Versus for the last three and a half years, I pretty much would just go as hard as I possibly could until I passed out. And always feel like I didn't get enough done. Like there was more I could have done. Like there's so much more and just behind, behind, late, late, rushed, rushed, and it's just not healthy. Over the last few years, I've kind of always had this concept of just working out hard enough to be able to eat whatever I wanted. Uh, and they'll tell you 50-50. It's 50% in the gym, 50% in the kitchen, or 60-40. I've just come to believe that it's probably 80-20. Uh, and that sucks, it's unfortunate, but that just is what it is, at least with my body. Um, so for me, that diet, it got super, super strict. Um, and for me, that was cutting carbs and cutting sugar. Um, so whether you call it the keto diet, I've been doing a little bit of research, uh, research into this carnivore diet uh, lately, uh, but cutting the sugars, cutting the carbs, for me is the one way that I can just start melting uh, fat. The interesting thing is when you go into full keto, um, actually going into ketosis and trying to stay into ketosis um, for long periods of time, people think, well, do you, how do you have energy without carbs? You actually have more energy once you get into ketosis uh, because ketones are the preferred source of energy for your brain. Um, your brain becomes more clear. You have better clean energy that your body is fueling itself. Uh, with and that thing and I think that word fueling is a key word when you can start looking at food as Fuel fuel for the things that you need to do in the day fuel for the workouts that you want to do instead of looking at food as enjoyment as Recreation as entertainment. That's when you really make the switch the reason I like the keto diet so much is because of the fact that I'm, I'm such an all-in person like all-in or all-out and so when I have those cravings of wanting something bad, sugar, carbs, whatever that may be, I start to think to myself, well, crap, this is gonna throw me out of ketosis. It's gonna take me four, five, six days to get back in. And by the time I have that little moment of, of thinking about that process uh, in my brain, I immediately get out of that or get over that craving. I'm like, ah, oh, it's not worth it. It's not worth spending the next four days getting back into ketosis uh, by eating this uh, piece of pizza or this candy or whatever that may be. Uh, but it's just a mental switch and wanting to be the best version of you. I can't tell you how many overweight salespeople there are out there. And I've been there, like that was me. Like I, I live on the road. I've been in those scenarios and, and this is how it starts, right? This is how it starts. It, it's, it's this. It's justifying, man, I crushed it today. I sold this many policies. I did this many deals. I you know, started all this stuff. So I'm gonna reward myself by eating garbage tonight. And it may not be garbage, but rewarding myself by eating this big meal that I know is not what I'm supposed to be eating. Literally as a way to reward myself for the job well done at work. But the true, true person that's going all in in all areas understands that that's not how you reward yourself. That you have to continually level up and continually be pushing the boundaries of every single aspect of your life to become extraordinary. 
And, but that's how it starts. It starts just something little like that. Andy Frisella the other day did an Instagram story where he said, have you ever had that cheat meal and then woken up and realized it's three years later? <laughs> and that's what it is for a lot of people. And you're on the road and you're eating fast food or you're eating on the run. And it's very, very easy to happen but it's not sustainable long term. It doesn't end well. And so you have to make that transition. For me, that's prepping meals for the week when I am gonna be on the road, knowing exactly what's gonna go into my body by having it already prepared for me in a cooler. I can go heat it up, know exactly what I'm fueling my body with and not leaving it up to chance, which leads up to temptation and ultimately leads to making bad choices, uh, which is those bad meals that you know that, that you, know that you shouldn't eat. legs are freaking killing me. <laughs> Train heavy legs for the first time in like, I don't know, probably three months on Tuesday or on Monday. Then Tuesday morning, got up and ran five miles. Now I'm like two days later when the soreness is at its peak and I'm out here running five miles again. About two and a half miles in painful but pushing through <laughs> making it happen your workout should contain an intensity level that you're all in like you're like i literally when i work out like you almost get to this this feeling of pain like as though you want to like cry because you are putting yourself through such intense activity every single time uh, when you are in the gym a lot of people don't do that. But this whole idea of, of, of seeking discomfort, it's not just in business, it's in the gym. Like if you were to go to the gym and just kind of get on a treadmill, do a little walk, you may go over, hit a couple machines, you leave, you never were uncomfortable, you never felt any pain. What's that gonna do for you? Ultimately, it's gonna do nothing for you. Versus you go in there and you absolutely push yourself to the limit. You're completely out of breath. Your heart's beating out of your chest. You're, you're doing heavy movements. You're lifting heavy weights. You're pushing yourself uh, to complete fatigue. Well, that's where the growth comes in. That's where gains happen, right? But it's about creating those moments in your life that you have to push through pain, that you have to show yourself what you're made of. That you have to dig down deep, ignore the pain, ignore the discomfort, and push yourself further than yesterday, further than the run two days ago. You have to find comfort in the discomfort. And that's what we're doing this morning. That's where you make the biggest difference is when you put yourself in the most discomfort um, when you're in the gym. And so I think when you combine those two, when you get those intense workouts, but then you fuel yourself with the right foods afterwards, that's when you're going to see the biggest results. Um, and for me, that's what's been happening over the last you know, about 17 weeks. I've gone all in on my diet and for the first time, I mean, I, I feel like I've unlocked like superhuman powers because I'm actually fueling myself for the intensity needed for these workouts. And I'm letting my body repair itself by getting adequate sleep, uh, by resting the right amount, and by having the fuel go in after and before workouts to make it to where I'm, I'm always like in this optimal state. All right, three miles in to this run this morning. And I feel pretty good, super sore. I feel good. If you want to be great, if you want to do great things, if you want to be powerful, you say, Tyler, I want to be powerful. I want to feel powerful. I want to move mountains. Okay. You want to move mountains, but you won't move yourself. You want to be great, but you don't want to have a great diet. You want to be great, but you don't want to get up and have a great workout in the morning. So there's only one way to be great, and that's by doing great things on a consistent basis. So quit hitting yourself, thinking that you can become something greater without doing something greater, and get out there and do it. 
Here's the cliff notes after training heavy legs Monday night and running five miles Tuesday morning. My legs are about as sore as they've ever been. I think the only thing that got me through those five miles was the awesome sex that I had with my wife this morning. What's up guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page. Then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.